Right guys, this is a long plane review for Gary Lineker's Hotshot on the Amstrad CPC released by Gremlin Graphics in 1988. And uh, here's the advert for the game found in magazines at the time. And lastly, here's the Kix budget re-release box with a different cover. Probably to time in with the World Cup in 1990. Anyway, uh, let's get this booted up. And I used to really like this as a kid, actually. Uh, I had the Kicks budget re-release. And, uh, oh, here's the uh, loading screen. Poor old Gary looks more like Jimmy Nail there. But, um, actually, it's still quite a nice loading screen. And we have a very nice title screen here with some excellent music from Ben Daglish. And as you can see, the game's actually called Hot Shots. And, obviously, the uh, Gary Lineker license was got later on. And it's nice how you can choose your options here with the bouncing ball. Uh, here's the instructions. We either have a one player league challenge uh, or you can have a two player match basically. And your keys and stuff like that there. Um, so yeah, this is actually quite a decent football game. There's not many truly uh, good football games on the Amstrad, which is a real shame because I'm a, I'm a huge fan of arcade and soccer games. I love them in the arcades like Tecmo's World Cup 90, Football Champ and all that kind of stuff. And I've always, always wanted a good football game on the Amstrad. And I spent lots of my pocket monies buying up various different football games and often been very disappointed. And as you can see there guys, it's, it, it, this game is put into divisions like um, you would in the Football League, not the World. But it, they're, they're, they are all uh, world teams, like international teams. And you start off in the 4th division and you've got to get to the top of the 1st division pretty much. And as you can see there, you can change teams and the colours of their strips change as well, which is rather nice. And we'll play as England, and we start off in the fourth division, and we'll play Northern Ireland here. And off we go. And as you can see, guys, it's a top-down view fo footy game. And I suppose if you're a fan of sensible soccer and things like that, and kick off, this will be good. But how it differentiates between uh, to the to those two games is the ball stays glued to your feet when you, when you uh, have the ball, whatever. And we've scored our first goal there. And as you can see, guys, there's a power meter for your kicks. And two different power meters there for two players, which is actually kind of cool. And what I like to see in a football game is being able to vary your kicks. You know, either short passes, long passes, lobbed balls and all that kind of stuff. And being, a being able to sort of pass to teammates and stuff like that a bit anyway. And get some kind of passing game going. I hate football games where there's only one kick strength and there's no point passing to any players or whatever, i.e. you know, you just run it down the entire length of the pitch or just hoof it. Now, quite a bit of Gary Lineker's um, hot shots is just like hoofing it down the pitch. Let's see if we can... Oh, lost out there. But if you change direction too suddenly and too much in the, in the opposite way, you will lose control of the ball there. So you can't just... It is not, the ball is not permanently glued to your feet all the time. So if you're going down the pitch and then you suddenly push up, you know, you will lose control of the ball. The ball will roll off going down the pitch and you'll be running off up the pitch. And yeah, so you do have to sort of, you know, push it at angles to like um, start dribbling the ball. You can't just uh, expect it to be stuck to your feet all the time. Oops. I don't know why I kicked it out for the corner there. <laughs> Never mind. Um, and also, if you hear any noises in the background, guys, apologies. I'm recording this in the middle of um, a storm at the moment. It's about 60, 70 mile, miles per hour winds outside. There's not much I can do about that. I don't know if the mic is picking up, but anyway. Um, right, second off. So these matches are actually quite short in length, and we've kept the timer to its shortest length so we can get through this as quickly as possible. But we're still going to be nearly an hour <laughs> getting uh, and getting through the game and completing it. Now there are certain ways you can always score in this game. Uh, I might be able to do it here. If you do a full power strength kick just outside the uh, penalty area, it will always basically just go over the goalkeeper and get under the crossbar. 
But it's nice in this game actually that you can actually hit the post and the crossbar and stuff like that. And there's even yellow cards for bad tackles and stuff. And there you go. So it's actually fairly feature packed for a, uh, an 8-bit home computer football game. And I like that. Um, it's easy to see where the ball is as well when you kick it in the air. Sometimes you don't have much visual clues in football games. Is the ball in the air or whatever? Here, the balls, you know, the, the sprite of the ball increases of si in, in size and you also get a shadow below the ball as well. And the shadow sort of moves to the right to higher the ball is, as you can see there. And that will give you a good estimate that how high the ball is and stuff like that. So nice. Um, it's easy to see which player you're controlling, of course. I have like little symbols under them. And the, comp the computer switches to the nearest player for you and does so um, actually rather well. Uh, again, that could be quite a problem in other football games. Um, also, the AI of the computer isn't too bad. Um, I, I have definitely played football games with worse computer AI. They will hoof it down the pitch and they will take shots and they will occasionally score. But overall, this is actually a rather easy football game, in my opinion. And once I worked out how to score, um, it was um, plain sailing from there. Okay, um, so now we're playing Wales. Now, um, let's talk about Gary Lineker very quickly, in case you don't know who he is, especially if you're not from like the UK or whatever. Um, Gary Lineker is a famous English footballer, regarded as one of the best ever strikers in the game throughout the 80s and early to mid 90s, I'd say. And he still holds the record for England for scoring most goals in the World Cup finals. Um, he's also famous for never actually receiving a red or even yellow card ever in his playing career and uh, was rewarded that with that for with a, a fair play award from the FA in the early 90s, I believe, or whatever. That's actually a really, really good achievement. And, um, and you know, he seems like a pretty nice all round guy, too. Um, since retiring from football, he's presented Match of the Day um, from 1999 onwards, which is the programme on British TV for highlights from the Premier League shown late on Saturday evenings. Um, there we go. Um, but he actually had his name to three different games. Um, so there's three games in the Gary Lineker series, I suppose. So the first game was actually Gary Lineker's Superstar Football a year earlier in 1987. Um, I don't remember that being very good at all. Uh, we're, all we're, we're actually sort of playing the sequel here. And then, of course, we ha we're playing Gary Lineker's Hot Shot in 1988. And lastly, they did like kind of a multi-sports like training thing called Gary Lineker's Super Skills in 1988. Uh, a bit like the it's a bit like the later Daily Thompson game, I suppose, in a way. Um I don't remember that being much fun, but it was kind of okay in terms of presentation and stuff. The goalkeepers are a bit stupid though. They kind of just stay rooted inside their little area around the goal. And they just move left and right and very rarely actually catch the ball. They usually just bounces off them. But anyway. Um so yeah, three games in the Gary Lineker series. Um, as for the graphics here, guys, um, I like the graphics here. Uh, it's nice and it actually looks quite colourful, but um, it's actually in mode one. Um, and actually works quite well because it's more detailed. Um, and according to the CPC Power website, oh, you look, you can do overhead kicks there, They're, although they don't much look like overhead kicks you kind of do them from a standstill or when you're in control of the ball so more of a more of a it's more of a powerful back heel now as i was saying according to the cpc power website the game is in mode one and via the use of rasters it allows to exceed the four colors by default and we actually get five colors in the game so presumably there, there's a, there's a split in the screen between the main plane area and the heads up display at the bottom there. Because we get a nice pink colour there. Because we've got white, green, 
um, red, black, the four colors in the main plane area. And actually that works quite well. There's a nice stippling effect on the grass there. And it's really, really important to have that kind of um, the pitch having those different shades of green there to give you a sense of like movement up the pitch. Uh, although the scrolling um, isn't at the greatest of frame rates, but it's passable and you can still enjoy the game. Um, and that's the only negative really so far. It's not at the greatest frame rate, but football games are tough for 8-bit home computers to handle with like, you know, 22 sprites not including the ball um, and other things going on around the screen. There we go, got another goal there. Short diagonal uh, kick there when you're in line with the post will, into the opposite direction will often go in. And nice scoreboard graphics there as well, taking it half time, full time, or a foul or a goal. I like that. So we'll have one more match in this division against, uh, I think it's Scotland. Yes, there we go. And uh, then we move up to the third division and uh, on our trek to get to the top of the first division and win the game. Right. Uh, what else to mention? Oh yeah, we talked about the three different games in the series, Gary Nicker's Superstar Football, Hot Shot and Super Skills. Um, but if, for those of you in Spain, this game was actually re-released as Emilio Butraguno 2. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that surname right, but I apologise to any Spanish viewers. Um, and that also included Gary Lineker's super skills as well. The name, of course, was removed or rebranded from Gary Lineker to Emilio Butraguno. And I remember the first Emilio game, actually, I've played that. And actually, that was fairly decent, but had a terrible frame rate. Anyway, um, yeah, um, I mean, I covered a lot of uh, Amstrad football games on one of my... Amstreams, which is my Amstrad live stream held every Friday evening. And um, I think in my, I did an Amstrad Football Games World Cup Amstream. And that was back in June 2018, if you want to go and check that out. And Gary Lineker's Hot Shot definitely reached my top 16 footy games. And I think it would make my top 10 today. Oh, hit the crossbar there. Oh, and it was apparently pa Gary Lineker pounced there. Typical Gary Lineker goal, poacher's goal. Headed it in off the crossbar. Fantastic. There we go. 2 0 up against the Scots. Apologies to any Scottish viewers. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, as for, you know. Ranking this amongst other football games, it's definitely no Emlyn Hughes beater. Um, I think I prefer playing this to Italy 1990. Uh, a lot of people love that football game, but um, it, that that game was just too fast and too silly. It wasn't. It <laughs> did really play a very good game of football at all. That one, if we're honest. Uh, do I prefer this to match day two? Ooh, match day two is just too slow. But if, if you put the emulator speed up for match day two to like 200%, yes, I would prefer match day two to this game. But otherwise, it's a tough choice. Um, definitely doesn't beat Mundial football, a Spanish football game. That was really, really good. Do I prefer this to Adidas Championship uh, football? That's another tough question. And that's also another top-down um, football game. Hmm. Adidas, I covered it. I did that as a long play about a year and a bit ago. Um, that was actually pretty good and very nicely re uh, presented. But it was too frustrating at times and very hard to sort of get to grips with and control. Um this one definitely you could pick up and play rather quickly. Maybe I probably do prefer Gary Lineker. But so there you go, guys. I mean, this one probably rates very highly against other Amstrad football games. But overall, maybe still a bit disappointing and lacking, really. Definitely going to be fun in two players, though. I've never tried it before with a second player. But I could see this one being a very, very good two-player football game, I reckon. I think mean, the other problem with this one is the computer AI, whilst it's better than a lot of football games, it's still a bit pants. Um, 
can often get by your computer opponents fairly easily. Although they managed to tackle me there. But I've, I managed to get the ball back. And uh, that's, the, that's the god spot there. Should be able to score this one. No! Um, not quite the right distance. And he tackled me. Uh, they just don't offer... See, the computer doesn't often score many goals, and that's that's a problem. You're sort of... The, the, the biggest enemy in the game is the clock, really. Oh, full time. And we should have moved up to the next division. As you can see, we're the top there. Played free, won free. And you have... Congratulations, you have gained promotion to the Division 3. And oh my god, we're playing against Brazil already. Why are Brazil in the third division? That's a bit strange. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, let's talk about the uh, the guys behind the game. So, of course, this is from uh, Gremlin Graphics. And on coding duties here was a gentleman called Gary Priest. We actually played one of his games last week uh, on my channel, reviewed and long played uh, Frank Bruno's Boxing, another licensed sports title. Um, so he did that, Frank Br Bruno's Boxing for Elite. Um, he also did uh, Basil the Great Mouse Detective, Footballer of the Year 2 and Techno Cop for Gremlin. And then lastly, Terminator 2 for Ocean. So two weeks in a row to uh, Gary Priest games. And uh, yeah, he's done a pretty good job here, to be honest, guys. Same with Frank Bruno. It was all right. Um, graphics was by a guy called John Harrison. He also did the graphics for Basil the Great Mouse Detective, uh, Super Scramble Simulator, Techno Cop, and Tour de Force, all for Gremlin. And that was it, at least on the Amstrad. And lastly, the excellent music from Ben Daglish on the uh, title screen. And we've just scored. Hurrah! So yeah, a pretty decent team there, really. And uh, they've done some okay games uh, between them. Uh, certainly enjoyed um, Techno Cop. Battle of the Great Mouse Detective, not so much. Um, but Gary Priest's Frank Bruno, um, which we covered last week, as I mentioned. Um, that was good fun too. Um, okay, let's um, talk about the other versions of this game. Um, so, um, the Zanuck Spectrum version uh, is done by the same team of people. So it has the same title screen, music, sound effects and gameplay. Even the frame rate and speed is identical. Only The only differences are in the graphics, which do not look as nice or as detailed. Um, weirdly, the players' heads are coloured as well as their kits, um, and it looks a bit odd. So definitely the Amstrad version has the advantage over the specky one here, and that would be the one to go for. Now, as for the Commodore 64 version, um, so it has the same tune from uh, Ben Duglish, but on the uh, fabulous Sid chip. Um, not sure which version I prefer, to be honest, guys. Maybe the Sid has it this time? I don't know. Um, Gameplay-wise, this is where it differs from the Amsterdam Specky versions. It seems to be a smaller pitch, but has very nice shades of green on the pitch. But weirdly, for the uh, C64, it has rather jittery scrolling and some odd jerky movements from the computer opponents. Uh, the pitch radar, which I haven't, I haven't actually mentioned yet um, on this version, is missing uh, the positions of the players. <laughs> Bit strange. Um, whilst I've not played the Commodore 64 version, watching a few videos of YouTubers playing it and struggling in frustration leads me to believe this is the weakest of the 8-bit versions. Um, yeah, at least the Specky and the CPC versions, despite its limitations, is easy to get into and control. Just pick up and play and uh, get a good match on the go there. Ooh, yellow card. <laughs> uh, this also appeared on a couple of 16-bit machines. Um, as expected, it appeared on the Atari ST, uh, which and it has a different tune. Um, it's fine, the game itself, but actually it's not as good as the 8-bit one. 
Uh, gameplay wise, it's still the same top down view with more of the pitch on screen playing a little bit faster too. But surprisingly, the scrolling is not a good frame rate. It's average to poor for a 16 bit football game. Um, and of course, the Amiga, as expected, um, this looks like an Atari ST port. However, the scrolling is much smoother. And of course, the music and sound effects are much better too. So even though this is an Atari ST port, it looks like they spent some time getting the scrolling better at least. So there you go. I think the CPC wins the best 8-bit version just over the Speccy. Um, and the Amiga version is better than the ST version, but there are many, many, many better 16-bit footy games out there, like Sensible Soccer, and this looks rather pathetic in comparison. There you go. Um, okay, as for magazine reviews at the time, um, this was reviewed in the June 1989 issue 45 of Amstrad Action, which actually ran a cover feature called Football Special on that one, and consequently is one of my favourite issues of AA because I'm a big fan of arcade soccer games. Anyway, they rather liked um, Gary Lineker's Hot Shot giving the game their AA Rave Award and praised it for placing good fun, fast and furious football first, but criticised the small playing window. Yes, we haven't talked about that. It is a rather small playing area, actually, and they are, right, they are correct and right to point that out. Um... Yeah, I do wish it was a bit larger, but however, the frame rate is already not very good here. So, yeah. Um, anyway, Amstrad Action in the review gave the graphics uh, 83%, the Sonics 66%, Grab Factor 77%, Stain Power 73%, is a score there, and an overall AA rating of 81%. I think that's, I think that's pretty fair. Although, actually, the Sonics, um, well, the music's very good. The sound effects are fairly decent. You, you've only got one noise for kicking a ball. You've got the bouncing ball noise. You've got the crowd cheer, the whistle. I mean, there's not much else you could put in a football game, really. Um, I think it's pretty decent. So that's the only thing I disagree with. Perhaps the Sonics should have rated a bit higher. There you go. Um, they later re-reviewed it twice. Um... Gary Lincoln's Hot Shot in Amsterdam Action, uh, first in issue 67 of April 1991, reviewing it on the 10 pack compilation. Uh, but they rated it lower at 76%, despite uh, what read as a rather glowing review there. And, and then, secondly and lastly, they reviewed it again in issue 39 of October 1991, the Budget a Kicks re release one. And they gave it uh, an even lower score of 72%, uh, marking it down for being too simplistic which is rather unfair compared to most of the football games on the Amstrad, let's be honest. Um, there we go. Right. Um, do you know what, guys? There's not much else sort of background, useful information and stuff which I normally re uh, research to give you guys to uh, put on this review, really. So I'm just going to have to really commentate on the, on the actual game as we go along if anything interesting happens. Um, but yeah, you've pretty much seen pretty much everything that happens in the game. The only thing we haven't had yet is, um, I don't think we've been awarded a foul yet, or a, a, certainly we haven't seen a penalty. Um, um, I don't think we've seen how corners work yet, unless I've missed it. Um... But yeah, corners are not very, very good. You kind of only can you can only kick it in three di different directions, um, <laughs> three different angles. Uh, say if you're taking it from the left hand side, so you can kick it at ninety degrees, um, one hundred and eighty degrees, and whatever's between one hundred and eighty and ninety degrees. Uh, I can't work at my. Is it one hundred twenty-seven? I can't work my maths out. <laughs> anyway, moving swiftly on. Um, but yes, uh, I like the stopwatch there in the bottom right hand corner. It's like the referee's timer on his and watch on his wrist. That's a nice touch. Um, the um, we have a radar there. Oh, full time. We'll talk about that in a minute. 
And final score, England 2, Denmark 0. One more match in this division and we'll get promoted. And we're playing Poland. Nice picture of the referee there, which masks the uh, radar briefly whenever an, an event happens. The radar itself, is it of any use? Um, to be honest, not really in this game. The dots are too small. Um, I believe, it's hard to work out, but I think the flashing dots are your players or player one. And the non-flashing dots are um, the second player or computer. Um, it, it would be quite useful uh, to do passing moves and stuff, but it's just too small to make out, really, in my opinion. And with it flashing all over the place, it's a bit hard. Um, you have a, you already have a good sense of where you are roughly on the pitch, anyway. Um, so for once, maybe the radar isn't very, very useful. Um, now normally I kind of complain about other football games which have a, which have a large pitch which don't have a radar. There are certainly some examples of that of uh, I think maybe is it kickoff two that is missing a, the radar. I can't remember, and that's quite a large pitch, and there's no um, different shades on the grass, so it's kind of hard to know where you are and where your other players are, making it very, very difficult to have a good game of footy. Hey, poached a goal there. Easy stuff. Um, but uh, anyway, it's just nice to have it there anyway. But maybe it might have been better to remove it if it gave us more CPU cycles for a better frame rate in the game, maybe. Mm. But I do think the power meter works really well. Um... Getting your timing exactly right can be quite difficult, and it's quite difficult to master. But once you do, um, it works really well, to be honest with you. There you go. Should be able to score. Oh, that was a, a pretty much a guaranteed goal there. If you just shoot full full power, um, about two uh, shaded length, shaded horizontal bars away from the uh, edge of the. Uh, Oh God! What do you call it? Penalty area, whatever. <laughs> forget the name. <laughs> forget the name of it in football. Uh, you're guaranteed to go. You'll see. You'll see anyway. We'll probably do another one here. There we go. About there. See? Yeah. No, I think I needed to be just a little bit further out there because it hit the crossbar. It was too high, but a diagonal shot usually works well if you get the right position. So I'm just trying to do that at the moment. No, didn't get the right angle there. Had to be a lot further in for that. Never mind. Okay, let's see if we can do another one here. Little pass there. That worked out quite well. We can do passes in the game. Di uh, diagonal shot here. Not too... There we go. Just did need it to be too um, strong. So you want about halfway. One green dot past the pink, three pink dots in terms of power. And that did it there. Again, the goalkeeper doesn't really die. It doesn't dive. The goalkeeper's fairly stupid. He just moves left and right. And that's it. There you go. Another diagonal shot there. Again, three dots there, three pink ones, one green one. That's about the power you want to get past the goalkeeper, but not blast it over the crossbar. And we're 3-0 up. To be honest, guys, in this division, we don't it don't seem to be much tougher. Um We'll see if... I think this is the last match of this division anyway, as we come to full time. We'll see if the difficulty increases any uh, by anything. Um, in the next division. Five seconds. There we go, full time. 3-0. Yep, and we should be promoted here. To division 2. Hey, there we go. Um, first match is against Holland. Yikes, our old rivals. Oops, completely screwed that up there. 
the kickoff. Never mind. And I think uh, the most common tactic, guys, is just to hoof it down the pitch in full power. Uh, you don't get much good passing plays, really, in this game, unfortunately. So that that is where it does lose marks as well. So hopefully here we could do a try diagonal shot. So that defender doesn't get us. Maybe a bit too much power. And nearly got the header in there. And that would have been a nice goal. He would have been he, <laughs> he would have been well offside there, actually. There's no offside rule in this game. Um and, uh, and I think Holland would have called for a VAR there, definitely. They seem to be surrounding my player a bit more, actually. Maybe the um, the difficulty has increased a touch. It's hard to tell. Again, they're doing the same tactics. They're just hoofing it down the pitch. I think this is about the closest they've had it to my goal, uh, the computer opponent, for uh, yeah, like for, for the entirety of this long play, I think. Okay, see if we can do uh, the, the guaranteed goal here. Yeah, that should do it. Should. There you go. Yeah, so it's about to, just just past two horizontal bar lengths of the of the pitch with its shading um, outside the penalty area. Full power goes in every time. I, I think it is a little bit of a shame in football games where you can always find the same guaranteed way to score every time. I, I think I'm too cl not far enough out. I think that would have hit the crossbar, that one. But it is a shame with football games where you find a guaranteed way to score every time. Um, but then again, you have football games where it's almost impossible to score two. And um, you need to find somewhere in the middle of the two where, um, where there isn't always a guaranteed place and spot to score every time, but then you, then again, it's not too hard to score. You have to be creative with your goal scoring. Are you getting crosses in and overhead kicks and cheeky back heels and stuff like that? That's where uh, Emlyn Hughes works really, really well. That's probably why Emlyn Hughes is the king of the football games on the Amstrad, I think. But there is a brand new football game. In oh, we've got a corner here. As as I said earlier, guys, you can only kick either straight across, diagonally down, or down. There's only like three directions you can kick the ball in. So that's the, that's the only thing to just do a short little kick there. Hopefully, we'll get a cheeky one across there. Ooh, hit the crossbar. Um, I was going to mention as well, there is a uh, new football game in, in the works for the Amstrad as of uh, speaking now. What, we're on the uh, 9th of Feb when I'm recording this commentary in, in 2020. Um, yeah, there's a new football game deep in the works for the Amstrad. So far, it's just called CPC Soccer. It's <laughs> quite a simple name and it looks very, very feature packed and looks like it could be quite decent. Even if at the moment the uh, scrolling and sprites look a little bit jitter jittery at times. We shall see how that turns out. But I'm very excited about that. And I'm gu guaranteed I'll be doing a video and, long and uh, live stream on that as soon as it's out. Ooh, good pass down the wing there. You can, see the, you can actually see the crowd there at the side of the uh, pitch. That's a nice touch. And full time, and we've won our first match. As we're in Division 2, we've got Spain and the Republic of Ireland in this one. And we're going to be playing Spain this match. So, I don't think this is um, as tough as it should be. I don't think the difficulty is really increasing here. Uh, which is a shame. And uh, yeah, so it becomes a little bit of a slog if you know if still if you're still watching this, guys. I'll just com uh, commentate on what happens on the pitch. I guess I don't think I've got anything else to really mention. So this is going to be tough keeping the commentary going. Uh, 
Um, okay, I, actually, we could perhaps talk about how the, in, the, in, the, uh, in this game in comparison to other football games. We touched on it a bit earlier. Uh, one game I forgot to mention that's an overhead perspective is MicroPro Soccer. Um, and again, not sure which I prefer more. Uh, I like the fact in MicroPro Soccer you can do a bit more. Uh, more of a range of shots with um, well they call it banana swerves in the game but you can actually sort of do yeah swerved shots and stuff like that they are a bit ridiculous because you just do the same uh, swerve every time um, and you have weather effects in micropro soccer and you have instant replays too um and in terms of gameplay wise, they're fairly similar, really. Um, but I think I kind of just prefer Hotshot. Not sure why, it's hard to sort of pinpoint, really. Maybe because it just looks a bit better. I don't know, maybe Micropose, because it's uh, actually maybe Micropose Soccer is better because um, the opponents do get tougher as you progress in the game, and um, maybe because it presents more of a challenge. Uh, just Micropose Soccer generally just looks a bit dull because it's a specky port, there's only like two colours um, in the game, sadly. But I think maybe Micropro Soccer just nudges a get uh, past hot shot. Oh, there should be a goal. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. I think maybe the computer is just slightly more aggressive in homing in on your player and doing tackles and stuff. Um, but uh, all the players move about at the same speed and stuff. So there's no variation in their speed. Um... So there's no individual skill levels for each of the players, i.e. some are not faster than others, some tackle them better than others, whatever. It's all it's a pretty even and equal playing field by the looks of it. Be interesting to see when we get in the in the uh, first division if um, they're going to be more aggressive attacking my goal, for example, and taking some actual shots. We'll see. We'll get another goal here. I think it might be. It might hit the crossbar though. There we go. <laughs> but nice um, animation there on that um, scoreboard there for when you score a goal. That's a nice touch as well. But there, yeah, guys, this is definitely a very, very good all-round football game. I suppose I might as well give my review here, actually. Um, yeah, I kind of agree with Amstraction, uh, at least in their first review. I think this is um, this is an 8 out of 10 game. I think I'm going to score this 8 out of 10. It's one of the better football games on the Amstrad. It's still fairly limited. Um, but it kind of looks quite nice. And it's it's easy to pick up and play and get into. You do need some amount of skill on this, but it's not hard um, to beat it in the end. Because actually, when I recorded this long play, guys, I don't think I'd played this game since we featured it on the Am stream in was it June 2018. And then before that, the last time I played it was probably when I was like 11 or 12 years old. And so when I came to record this long play, I didn't have a practice run. I just played it, set the record button going. I remember. I still remembered all the different ways you can score. Oh, I hit the post there. Ooh. Uh, I still remember all the different ways you can score again and again via, and it all came flooded back to me. And this is my first take as well of recording it. So we, I did, I did beat this on my first go um, for this video. So again. Perhaps about perhaps this is a football game for people that struggle with footy games as well. If you if you don't want too much of a challenge, maybe this is the one for you. And it's quite a relaxed pace as well. It's not the fastest football game in the world, but it does move at a decent speed. So I do like the graphics. I do like the uh, music on the title screen and in between matches. Um, I think the sound effects are decent. Needed a bit more crowd cheering noises within the match itself, just maybe subtly in the background would have given it a bit more atmosphere. 
I like the presentation of it. Um, I like the heads up display at the, at the bottom and how they've done the power meter. Uh, the wristwatch is a nice touch there, as is the radar for the pitch, even though it's fairly useless. Um, and overall, this is a solid package. So yeah, I kind of agree with giving it eight out of 10. Uh, definitely not the best football game on the Amstrad, as we've talked about. Emlyn Hughes probably has that honour, along with Mundial Football uh, run, uh, as runners-up. And then just behind that, you've got Micropro Soccer, maybe Italy 1990. Italia 90, mm, not really, although that's quite good in two players. Um, Micropro Soccer's up there as well. But yeah, that's the hot shot is within that sort of pack of uh, Micropose, Italy 1990, Italia 90, and such like for, for football games. Maybe Match Day 2 has this beat, maybe. If Match Day 2 had like double the speed, it would be fighting with Emlyn Hughes for the best foot, footy game. But as it is, it's too slow. So um, yeah, it's in the pack along with a hot shot, maybe in like the third place pack of games. And then we've got, of course, we've got the really terrible, terrible football games on the Amstrad um, that are best forgotten about, like uh, Am Soccer, Glen Hoddle Soccer, Fiverr Side Soccer. Oh, utterly, utterly dreadful, dreadful games. And of course, ha I've got to uh, give a special mention to another licensed football game. And was one of Gary Lineker's uh, colleagues and played in the same team and played in the England squad in Paul Gascoigne uh, with Gazza's Super Soccer. That was bloody dreadful. And that is the only Amstra game I ever bought from a shop that I actually um, took it back to the shop and said, give me my money back. This is terrible. I mean, I, I bought some terrible games over the years, guys, uh, as as we all did. You know, I'm looking at you, Pit Fighter and Super Space Invaders and stuff. Um, <laughs> I actually kept them, you know. I thought, oh, well, hopefully my next game will be a better one. But I was so enraged and annoyed and upset how bad Gazza's Super Soccer was, especially having Gary Lineker's Hot Shot, that I actually took it back to the shop and said, this is so dreadful. I just please swap it or give me my money back and they just gave me my money back <laughs> there you go i've told that story quite a few times over the years but there mm. gaza 2 though was all right that's that's actually not too bad a foot footy game and gaza 2 was destined for the gx 4000 it's another one of those lost carts and a holy grail another holy grail alongside chase hq for gx 4000 collectors gaza 2 the GX4000 version. We believe with that one, there was only a few review copies sent out to magazines and it never went into full production. So somewhere out there... Oh, what a goal there! Long ball and then a header right on the penalty spot there, I think pretty much into the goal there. Probably one of the best goals I've scored in this game. Yeah, the goals you score in this game are not particularly spectacular at times, which is a shame. In Emily Hughes, he can score some really spectacular goals, mostly sort of long-range chip shots and stuff like that. But um, that was actually quite a good goal there. I like that one. That was that was satisfying, <laughs> especially against France, which we're playing at the moment. But yeah, if you want to read up more on Gaza 2, please have a look at the gx4000.co.uk website, which I built many, many years ago. It's badly out of date, I know, I know. But I did a big feature on Gaza 2, and I've collated and put together everything I found out about the game from magazine reviews and screenshots and previews and stuff like that, and any other snippets of information. It's all there on the gx4000.co.uk website in the main website section. Um, and I'm sure it'll be fairly easy for you guys to find. Another nice goal there. And we're 2-0 up against the French. Uh, this makes me wonder, actually, whether this game was released in France and it kept the Gary Lineker name or not. I presume it did. 
know if there's anyone French watching, let me let me know in the comments if you had this game in France and if it kept the Garadinica name. I forgot to check that out. Not that it's really important. Oh, the goalkeeper kind of fumbled then, but he still managed to ca catch hold of the ball there at the end. And now it's half time. So we don't have too far to go now. And uh, yeah, what else to mention? <laughs> I'm struggling. <laughs> Should be a diagonal shot here. Should get it in. I thought that thought then it was just going to bounce off my player and bounce away from the goal. But thankfully, carried on into the goal. So, he was clearly offside as well. So, VAR replay needed. <laughs> thankfully, no VAR back in 1988. Well, this could be cheeky. Now nah, the goalkeeper moved in time. Yeah, a good diagonal shot can often go in like that, catching the keeper off guard. That is another way to score, but I needed to be a lot further in then. Blimey, that's a long kick from their goalkeeper. Uh, it's fairly easy to tackle your opponents too. Just basically go up to them, make sure you're sort of facing the ball, and just hold down the fire button essentially, and eventually you'll hoof it away from them. Just give it a little punt there just to get away from this defender. Yeah, perhaps they are getting a little bit more aggressive in their tackling. Well, that shot there was going to be a little bit too weak to actually get past the keeper and the goal line there. But it just, just, just crept over the line there. And we're now 4-0 up. And I'm finding this a lot. See, I'm just getting better and better at the game as we go along. Uh, the difficulty really isn't increasing that much, if anything, if it's noticeable. And we're now in a match where we're 4-0 up. Oh! Uh-oh! Ah! Bug. Glitches. Right. This sometimes happens with throw-ins. The, the, the uh, sprite there's got glitched. Oh, dear. I think this is the only bug I've come across in the game. But thankfully, we were 4-0 up and it was near full time. So, um, yeah, we'll just gloss over that one. So, two more matches and we win them. We win the uh, tournament or the league challenge. And finally, the long play will be over. <laughs> Right, good, pa good pass down the pitch there, the defender tackles nicely and hoofs it away. So even the computer is playing hoof ball here. <laughs> nice diagonal clearance to get ourselves out of trouble there. See if I can get it round. So it's quite. It's actually a lot harder, actually, perhaps in the high divisions, to do that kind of spin around the opponent there, just to sort of dribble it around him. Yeah, maybe the maybe the uh, computer opponents are just a little bit more aggressive and quicker in reacting. But again, it's so hard to tell and notice. We'll do a diagonal one here. Ooh, just past the post. Thought it was worth a worth a go there. <laughs> Short clearance from the goalkeeper. Ah, but the ball ended up bouncing behind me there. It's a shame. Yeah, especially when the ball is moving up and down and getting tackled and stuff, and the screen has to quickly scroll up and then quickly scroll down again. It look, does look, doesn't look very good um, with the frame rate. Oh, that was a nice goal. So there you go. Again, a diagonal shot at the right position. Full power will always go in if you can get that position right every time. Bit harder to pull that off though than the straight uh, down the middle and uh, full power one I've been using quite a lot already in the long play. Ooh, I thought that was going to be. Uh, I thought I was going to be on there. But the ball just bounced away from here. Now we're at half time. So 
So we're 1-0 up over Italy here in our penultimate match. I think our last match is against Uruguay from what I briefly saw in the uh, division table there. Strange team to feature in our last ever match and why Uruguay are so highly featured when uh, I think Argentina is completely missing from this. But there we go. Don't remember seeing if Argentina are actually in this game. Hmm. Anyway. Um. Oh yeah, it's a bit of a shame that all the t uh, all your opponents play in red every time. I, I forgot to mention that, or failed to notice that actually, and don't play in their uh, strip, uh, their actual strip colours, which is a bit strange because you can actually change the colours of the teams on the uh, title screen if you remember right at the very start of the video. So it was possible to do. Um, I'm sure there would have been enough space in the memory left over to have like a, a number for a color assigned to a particular team. Wouldn't have been too hard to do. Um, yeah, our, your opponents are always red. Oh, we're too close in here. This won't work, a little crossbar. Yeah. Oh, but I get the rebound on the, and the header in. Nice. And we're two nil up now. I like the scrolling messages as well. That's another nice touch there, just below the power meter. Yeah. I will have to check out the first uh, Gary Lineker game at some point. Gary Lineker's Superstar Sucker, I think it was called. Um... I found it. I found it very kind of a bit tough to get into. I think you actually end up only controlling one player for the entirety of the match, if I remember correctly. Vague memories of that one, and wasn't that much fun. But I will have a look at that at some point in the future. There we go. Top of the table with one more match to go. Bit of a strange league thing, really. With only three matches per league, but <laughs> there you go. Um. Yeah, um, I think they would have been better off doing like a proper World Cup competition and having a bit more presentation, showing like the rounds and stuff like that, uh, and having a nice World Cup um, as the ending screen or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, we're against Uruguay here. Oh, 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 is the defender going to score? Oh, the, I thought the defender was going to score an own goal there. That would have been nice. <laughs> um, corners are <of> crap. <laughs> yeah, I keep that too hard, though. So you can only just, you only really, you, you only want to do those corners in that direction diagonally at a very, very short power. Mm-hmm. Let's see if we can score in our last match. Nice diagonal shot here, maybe. We we'll get close enough. Oh. oh, just hit the pose there. Nice goal, goal mouth action there, but uh, sadly, they have hoofed it away from us. And they've hooped it even further down the pitch. Will they actually go and attack, us, attack our goal? Nope. Because it's fairly easy to tackle them and then just hoof it down the pitch yourself. Oh, is this going to go in? It is. It went off the head of the defender. I was actually too close there for the power, uh, full power shot to normally work there. But I think with it hitting the head of the defender, it just um, sailed it nicely there. Excellent. There we go. Half time. One nil up. And finally, we're getting to the end of this long play. <laughs> Yeah, there you go, hoofball tactics. <laughs> Not exactly world or international class football, really, is it? <laughs> I 
Nice touch there, the goalkeeper holding it and bouncing the ball before he takes his kick. Good grief, that was a that was a big kick. <gasps> They're gonna shoot. Nah. Tackled. Too easy. Oh yes, of course, like your nearest player, if they're off the screen, you get that white and red arrow there, white for myself and red for the uh, opponent. That's a nice touch. I forgot to I, I completely missed that and forgot to mention it earlier. But that actually works quite well. And the computer does select the nearest player rather nicely and rather some some football games where it, the computer selects your nearest player for you could be really, really awkward and kind of broken. Um, it works actually quite well in uh, Hot Shot, to be fair. And that's why I'm going to give this game an 8 out of 10. Yeah, I like the, I like the graphics. Uh, nice and detailed players. Uh, it's, not, it's not a horrendous blocky mess. And it actually looks quite colourful for Mode 1 and done quite well. I think the sound effects are decent along with the music. Uh, the presentation is pretty good. And overall, this is one of the better football games on the Amstrad, despite its failings in various places. So, yeah... I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10 overall. And um, we're going to run the clock down here. <laughs> Time wasting tactics. In the last few seconds. And we're, we're only going to win this 1 0 at the very end there. But finally, it's full time. And the whistle is blowing on my long play video. Congratulations, you are the league champions. You just get a brief text screen like that. That's all you get for winning. Oh, that's a bit disappointing. But there you go guys, that was Gary Lineker's Hot Shot, or Hot Shots as it was originally known, as you can see in the title screen there. And uh, yeah, very nicely presented, pretty decent, and an 8 out of 10 overall. So thank you very much for watching guys, and I will catch you all again very very soon. Goodbye. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please click a like below, leave a comment, and also subscribe if you haven't already. And over that way, there's another video for you to check out. Zypho, out.